Recently, I started hearing about this distillery based out of Atlanta, Georgia, that I didn't really know much about. I just kept hearing about this Fiddler bourbon, <laughs> and I didn't really know much about it. What they are doing is sourcing their products and then finishing them basically in a toasted barrel. So here's a brand that I'm interested in exploring and trying to learn more about because I think when you're sourcing, I definitely get the business of it. You could still mess that up. <laughs> there are brands that just because your source doesn't automatically mean you're going to come out of this with good whiskey, but to source and then finish it in the toasted barrels. I have heard such good things about ASW and it made me very interested in them as a brand, but it was just recently that I actually was even able to find this in Indiana. So a while ago, the brand actually reached out to me and asked me, you know, have you ever had our stuff? Have you heard of our stuff? So I've heard of it, never got a chance to try it. I included it in my last whiskey haul. Both of these bottles were sent to me from ASW, but as always, all of the content, my reviews, all that stuff is my own opinion. Nobody can tell me, <laughs> you know, what I need to say on these videos or anything like that. They send me the stuff. I enjoy that because it gives me an opportunity to maybe try whiskeys that I otherwise would not have been able to try to see whether or not I recommend them. Now, again, because both of these have been sent to me, I don't know an exact price point, really. I thought I saw these somewhere in like the $60 range. I could be wrong here. Uh, not going to really say a price point because I have zero idea. <laughs> I thought maybe it was like in that 50 to 75 category. But again, I, I really have no idea. I've just seen some whiskey tubers and social media influencers, all that stuff, talk about ASW and do some picks. But I haven't really gotten a chance to really deep dive into this brand. But either way, today we're going to deep dive into the whiskey <laughs> itself. The first one up is the toasted bourbon. Again, this is all sourced products from MGP. Anytime you source, like the thing that I think about with younger brands is that product may be good and maybe we start to become accustomed to that MGP profile and those toasted profiles. So when you start distilling your own products and start releasing those, how is that transition going to be? Only time will tell for that one. But let's check out the toasted bourbon. The, the first thing I notice is it's pretty high proof. I believe that the proof's at 58.7%. And I think that initially you do get the ethanol, right? It's got to open up. It's too high of a proof to just to go right in. So I did have to let this sit for a little bit. But as it sits, the aromas that I get from this, and it's, it's always hard for me because it's like, is it the power of suggestion? The fact that I see toasted, so I think of these flavors and these scents that I get from anything toasted. <laughs> so for me, it's almost like, I, I don't even like saying smoky. It's just like very subtle smoke, almost like when you're out at a campfire, just like you start a fire, you start a campfire, but it's not really doing anything yet. It's just <laughs> kind of like lingering, kind of getting started. I, I think for me, that's kind of what it reminds me of. And again, tough because it's like is it because it's toasted that I just automatically think this that I just automatically think this I don't know but I definitely get that subtle smoke that that wood and marshmallow definitely marshmallow on the nose but again with this being a toasted MGP product I, I don't feel like that's very far off the one thing that I would say too as I continue to nose this glass is I love their transparency so it'd be very easy to just kind of make it seem like you know whatever and try to deceive the consumer but they don't do that they are very specific they talk about how they don't chill filter they talk about how they don't add color if you're a diehard whiskey enthusiast you understand why that's not necessarily needed in terms of the adding colors but if you're somebody who is just kind of getting into it or maybe doesn't understand the differences or maybe there's just a generic label that says whiskey that maybe could add coloring or whatever the case is some people aren't really sure and so I love the fact that they take that out of the equation and they tell you that they don't chill filter and they tell you that they <laughs> this is a source product they don't tell you the specific brand but they tell you that it was distilled in Indiana and then they tell you that it was then finished and bottled in Atlanta Georgia so I, I just love the transparency there it takes all the the guessing out of it for us it just tells us this is what happened we got the barrels from there we finished them it's not like that was finished before and then we just picked the finished product they're they're just keeping us in the loop and i love that anytime a brand can provide that type of transparency it's great all right so yeah so the bourbon typical i would say toasted bourbon here on the nose like i said campfire marshmallow let's see what it tastes like cheers so the palate for me like takes this in a completely different direction it's the nose is so campfire toasted typical toasted <laughs> nose the palate for me ends up becoming more of like a red fruit candy sweetness but there's also this lingering spice playing in the background almost like a licorice spice so the the note that i wrote down here is twizzlers right like that red fruit <laughs> like candied sweetness licorice that little bit of spice there i wouldn't say this tastes like twizzlers like oh if you take a sip of this it's like biting a twizzler i'm not saying that but i'm saying that this is what that reminds me of this part of my brain is picking up twizzlers it's like the, it's like that type of memory for me let's keep going with this one 
yeah definitely it's just it's so strong of like candy sweetness oh man it's there for sure i think it's it's just different to me than a typical toasted bourbon on the palate like i said the nose especially with what i had there i thought for sure that this was just going to be kind of my average toasted <laughs> bourbon here but it's not it's going in a different direction and then there's that licorice spice i do think that this is definitely sweet and spiced from that that I keep getting licorice on that spice note. The two are there. So I think that it, it you would assume that it's balanced or assume that it's, you know, because it's sweet and spicy. For me, I don't feel like it is as balanced. I feel like it's initially super sweet and then it, it falls off into this licorice spice. It's not like I'm getting the two together that are playing well <laughs> with each other. It's it's one powerful one and then one powerful one on the back end. Yeah, let's let's finish this one off. I'm yeah. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I just keep going back to it. That candied sweetness is playing over here. The spice is playing over here. I wish they would come together more, but I kind of, when I review whiskey, I think about music sometimes and how you can have different instruments playing. If it comes together as one fantastic song or whatever, right? It takes all these pieces coming together combined and not just sounding like separate instruments. This to me feels like separate instruments. It feels like I get them all. I can I can definitely tell they're there, but I would love for it to kind of meld together a little bit more. Not saying this is like bad. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that I just wish that I think that one piece is missing where they can kind of come together and just be a better overall experience. But if you love sweeter bourbons, especially, and I think like, you know, what I've noticed is people that are new to it, or if you're coming from like the cocktails, like you like sweeter cocktails, something like that, I think you would love this one. But if sweeter whiskeys are not really your thing, and I'm not talking about like flavored whiskeys, I just mean in general, like a bourbon that's just happens to be a little candied sweeter. And I, it could even be the wheat that's playing in here with that toasted, the combination, but it's definitely sweeter on the palate. So I think overall, I would rate this a 90 out of 100. I think that, like I said, if you enjoy that sweetness, I think that you will enjoy this whiskey. I don't think there's anything wrong with this bourbon at all. I think that if it just played together a little bit better, I think I would rate it a little bit higher, but still nothing wrong with this one. And I think it's just a great product from ASW. All right, now given that, let's see what the toasted rye is like. So again, this is also sourced from MGP so that you have the 95% rye, 5% malted barley recipe that MGP is known for. And then it's been finished in a toasted barrel in Georgia. So the nose on this one to me is like, it reminds me of like, it's there's nuttiness there that I didn't get in the bourbon. There's, it's not like a traditional rye nose though. I don't know that I could pick this out as a rye. Maybe I could, but I think the fact that I know it's a rye, it's that's the only reason why I'm picking up some of those typical notes, but I don't really get much of that mint pine, like your typical, I don't even wanna say typical rye, but maybe your typical MGP rye. I'm not really getting that. The nuttiness is there. It's almost like a, like a roasted or toasted or whatever, almond or pecan or something like that. All right, well, let's see what it tastes like. Cheers. So this one's interesting to me. It's it's that toasted component is bringing those rye notes down, but it's bringing other notes forward. So for me, it's taking that sweetness from the toasted barrel and the spice from the rye, and it's a lot more balanced. Kind of like what I just said with the bourbon, how I didn't feel like they were playing well together. I think with this one, they are. I think the sweetness from that toasted barrel and the rye spice are playing together just fine. <laughs> I think that those flavors are coming together. I feel like this overall is a little bit more balanced of a whiskey than what I just had with the bourbon. The only downside that I would say for this rye compared to what I just had with the bourbon, I think the rye drinks a little thinner to me that that mouthfeel just, just feels a little thin compared to what I just had with the bourbon. The bourbon was more decadent in that sense. The rye, like I said, a little thinner, but the flavor is definitely there still with the rye as well. Yeah, the longer that I drink this, the more that I let it sit, the more that I let that finish come into play. On the back end of this, so the back end of my drinking experience, the finish, that's where I'm starting to pick up some of the, they're subtle, but the rye notes are there. So you have the mint, you have the pine, those are starting to come in. I think initially, instead of just hitting me with the sweetness like the bourbon did, I think it's it starts out a little bit more balanced. And then I think that rye, not even rye spice, I would just say rye flavors start to pick up and start to overtake it in the finishing side of that. Still overall very good. I think my preference between the two would be the rye, even though, like I said, the rye is a little thinner for me. I like the mouthfeel of the bourbon better, but I think just for the fact that the rye has more of a balanced component to it, I think I enjoy it neat a little bit better. Again, if you're making cocktails with this or you know, you drink it a different type of way or maybe you have different preferences, you may score these a little different. I would rate this rye a 92 out of 100. I think that the proof actually helps this here. I think it's a familiar profile with the 95.5. I think the toasted is actually helping. One thing I don't like about 
I wouldn't even say it's like a lot of toasteds that do this or a lot of finishes that do this. But one thing I don't like is when you take bad whiskey and then you try to finish it and put it in a toasted barrel or a honey barrel or whatever barrel you want to throw it in and try to mask the imperfections. This starts out with great whiskey and I think the toasted component just adds more to it. I think that's true for both of these. Neither one of these are bad. I think if you like rye whiskey, you would like this. I think if you, just because you like bourbons, doesn't necessarily mean you would like the bourbon. I think there's still a high chance you would, and especially like I said before, if you like some of those sweeter notes, I think that you would love that one. But because of the balance, I think I prefer the rye. Let's finish this one off. All right, so there you go. <laughs> there's my thoughts. There's the ASW Fiddler Toasted Bourbon, and then there's the ASW Fiddler Toasted Rye. I prefer the rye over the bourbon, but both still overall very good products. Thank you again, ASW, for sending these and letting me try them. If you've had these, if you've had both, I would be curious to see what your thoughts are and which one you prefer. Or maybe these aren't available yet in your state, but either way, I love anytime there's a new brand that's just willing to do different things and put their own products out there. We've seen toasted barrels, we've seen toasted bourbons and ryes, we've seen all these things, but what can you do to put your own spin on it? And then where can you take that direction going forward? That's what I'll be looking for from ASW in the future. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.